Welcome to the MH2801 video segment on the orthogonality of between two cos 2 pi mt over capital T and sine 2 pi mt over capital T. Now, consider the integral from 0 to t of cosine 2 pi mt over capital T times sine 2 pi mt over capital T. Now, if we are to evaluate this integral, we must first convert the product between cosine and sine into a sum of um, trigonometric functions and the trigonometric identity that we were going to use to do this is in the earlier case the a multiple angle formula for uh, cosine in this case we're going to use the multiple angle formula for sine which is sine a plus b equals to sine a cos b plus sine b cos a and also sine a minus b equals to sine a cos b minus sine b cos a so if we take if we add up these two uh, signs then we will get sine a plus b plus sine of a minus b equals to 2 sine a cosine b now we can make we can identify a with 2 pi and t over capital t and b with 2 pi and t over capital t because uh, 2 pi and t over t is uh, the argument of sine and 2 pi and t over t is the argument of uh, cosine and this will of course becomes 2 pi m plus n t divided by capital T and a minus b will become sine oh, not sine, whoops uh, let me get my eraser will be equals to 2 pi n minus m t divided by t so making use of these results we can write the integral from 0 to t as 1 half Okay, let's put a square bracket here, sine of 2 pi m plus n t divided by capital T plus 1 half sine of 2 pi n minus m t divided by capital T dt. And then we can integrate the sines, and the sines will integrate to cosines. So you get one, we will get 1 half cos minus cosine 2 pi m plus n t over capital T divided by 2 pi m plus n t over capital T and then minus cosine of 2 pi n minus m t over capital T divided by 2 pi m my uh, n minus m divided by capital T now this uh, I just made a mistake here so there shouldn't be a T in the denominator so just be 2 pi m plus n over capital T and these we have to evaluate at capital T and also at 0 now what happens when we evaluate this at capital T okay now we see that if we evaluate this at capital T, we will substitute this in here. We will have cosine of a integer multiple of 2 pi. So this will become 1. Okay? But at the same time, if we substitute the uh, lower limit 0 into here, we will get cosine of 0, which is also 1. But the upper limit carries with it a plus sign, so it's plus times a minus. Whereas the lower limit carries it with, with it a minus sign, so this will be uh, minus times minus. So in the end, when we evaluate both limits, we get minus one. We will get uh, minus. We will get minus uh, 
1 over 2 pi m plus n divided by t and then we have a plus 1 over 2 pi m plus n divided by t and these two will cancel each other okay and then the same thing happens with the other cosine term if we substitute capital T into here we will get 1 if we substitute 0 into here we will also get 1 but there is a relative sign difference between the two so the two terms cancel and this is equals to 0 always even when n is equals to m because this m is equals to n, n if n is equals to m there's nothing, no problem here. Our argument that the lower, the upper limit cancels low, lower limit works. Uh, if this n equal, is equal to m, then we will have cosine of zero all the time. So therefore, it is uh, when whether it is t or zero, it will still be one, and therefore the lower and the upper limit cancel each other, and therefore this is zero always for all values. For all values of m and n and that tells that tells us therefore that the integral from 0 to t of cosine 2 pi m t over t cos uh, sine 2 pi n t over t dt is equal to 0 and this is our orthogonal orthogonality relationship between sines and cosines